Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. Today I'm going to show a uh, Rolodex card or memory decks, however you want to put it, um, an altered Rolodex card. I'm definitely late to the party on this one. Um, I discovered decorated Rolodex cards just this week and apparently this fad has been going on for about nine years. So I don't know how I missed that, but um, I tried it, my hand at it, and I absolutely love it. I'm already addicted. It's so much fun to take that little uh, Rolodex card and just create, sit down for 30 minutes to an hour and create a cute little mixed media piece. And I'm just having a ball doing it. It's like doing art journaling, but in a little mini, mini scale. I used to participate with artist trading cards for a while, and it's just not my cup of tea. So this is just super fun. I love the size of it and I've already created a couple of really fun cards to go on this and um, this is the Heidi Swap Memory Ducks and I guess that they're discontinued. You can find them here and there and my mother just happened to find one and sent it to me this week as an early birthday to surprise me. So I'm making some fun cards and um, enjoying this process very much. So here's my here's my memory decks and my cards so far. And so let's get started and have some fun and I'll do one that I'm gonna create today. I received this cute Art by Marlene set of rubber stamps from Mimi. Thank you so much, Mimi. Look at this adorable girl with wooden shoes and it's got tulips and of course a really cute windmill. Um, but the only two pieces I'm going to use are the girl and the tulips today because you have a small space to work on. And so I'm going to use a regular size Rolodex card and these stamps and create something really fun. So the first thing I did was to just take two different colors of acrylic paint and a brayer and brayer across this just to uh, put a background, a colored background on my little Rolodex card. Next, I'm going to stamp the girl, and I'm going to stamp her using Black Ranger Archival Ink because you can do uh, wet mediums over that. So I'm going to stamp her on cardstock. The flowers I'm going to stamp with the same kind of ink, but I'm going to stamp them on watercolor paper. And in case anyone asks, this art my Marlene set is called Go Dutch. So here's what they look like stamped. I stamped the Dutch girl onto just heavy cardstock and the tulips i did about five of them on a scrap piece of watercolor paper so obviously i'm going to watercolor paint these this one i'm going to color in probably using uh, alcohol markers a combination of of alcohol markers colored pencils and uh, some Caran d'Ache Neo color too, just tipping them off the crayon. So I'm going to just uh, color her and then I will come back and show you how I'm going to watercolor paint the tulips. So here's my girl all colored and it's so tiny. It's a little tedious to color it in. So I ended up using Arteza brush markers because they have a really, really fine point and I could get those cute little details. So I just need to cut her out and now I'm going to watercolor paint the tulips. My watercolor paints are Paul Rubens and um, I've used Archival Ranger Archival Ink. And now I'm just going to spray the images with some water and I'm using a water brush. Some people who watercolor paint would probably say that's a no-no but I don't know. I think it works just fine. And I wet my paint so I missed those. And then I'm going to just pick up, start picking up some color and dropping it in. Just doing some simple water coloring. And it doesn't matter if it goes outside the lines because I'm going to trim them out. I'm going to cut them out with scissors. And when you use a water brush, you need to um, be sure that you dab it off to get the paint off of your brush or swirl it around it in a cup of water. So that way you don't contaminate your paints. And I'm just gonna put some color on these tulips. And I like the wet-on-wet wet approach with watercolor because 
you just are really fun to blend them into each other this way and especially for something like tulips they're just going to come out so pretty when you're letting that watercolor paint just kind of mix all into each other and if it's starting to be not blend just mist it kind of dabbing it where I want it and then you let it do its watercolor thing I like that When I'm using yellow and orange, I like to come in with some magenta. I love adding magenta color. I think magenta is just so pretty. And when you add it to yellow and orange, the colors that it becomes is just so pretty. Wouldn't it be fun to go and see the tulip fields in Holland? That would be a wonderful, amazing bucket list adventure. If I could travel, I would love to go do that. So I'm not doing anything that's too terribly special here, just dabbing in color here and there and letting them blend. And you can always um, come in with colored pencil as well over watercolors. So that might be something really fun to do is to let it dry and then add a touch of colored pencil to them. And here I'm just using water with no color on it and that's just letting me come and blend some of this the lines out so see how it made a line and I'm coming back in with just a watered brush no pigment on it no watercolor paints and then blending that out These look pretty cute. Pretty cute. And then the leaves. I'm just going to do a little wash of color with the on the leaves. I'm not worried about the lines so I'm just throwing that color down because I can I'm gonna trim them out so if I were doing a painting where I was trying to stay in the lines I'd do a nicer job but <clears throat> because I plan on trimming them I'm not so worried about being neat and tidy with my lines now i'm going back in with a darker color and where their little dot dot dots are on her rubber stamp i'm just picking up a darker green 
and just dropping it in because this is wet it'll just kind of blend itself and it's already showing you where to put the shading so if there's dot dot dots you can just add some darker green and let it do its thing and you'll get some nice leaf shading So see there's dot dot dots on the stamp put in some darker green there now that they're dry I'm gonna go back with some colored pencil I'm using um, Uniposca you can use any brand of colored pencil I have lots of different brands these were just right here at and so I'm grabbing these and I'm just gonna come in and at the tips and the bases I'm just bumping up the color a little I'm not I don't want to interfere with my pretty watercolor painting but I'm just making them have a little bit more depth that's all I love colored pencils I love watercolors see how I'm let me zoom in here so here's this flower and it's pretty as it is but if I come over here on this side and just add some colored pencil see how that just added some shape to that and made it more round it made it pop a little bit more and made it look more round instead of flat that's what is nice to do with your little colored pencils come in on the side add some shading maybe at the tips of the petals like that so it just adds some add some interest and just make them look really pretty the watercolor alone is pretty you could stop there I just I just like to play I love my art supplies and I love to play and have little touches that just make it special I think the more things that you do on your artwork to make it your own and make it special is what makes it your artwork and sets it apart from others. So we all can take this same rubber stamp set and um, stamp it and paint it, but they're not, not, no two are going to come out the same. That's what's so fun about it is everybody's will come out different and it'll have your flair mixed media art is so fun too because you can do all these fun techniques so there's with some colored pencil just to bump it up boost them up and now they're ready to be cut out so there's what they look like colored and cut out and I just wanted to show that all of the flowers were going the same direction which looked kind of funny to me so to do a flip or an opposite stamp if you use a small uh, jelly plate you can take your rubber stamp and stamp on the jelly plate press that down onto your cardstock and you'll get the reverse image so I created see how this is the reverse the leaf going this way and the small one on the left instead of the right so i created a couple of reverse ones so that when i make my little field of tulips they're not all going the same way with a leaf that's just too uniform for me so that's what i did to make a reverse so now what i'm going to do with my little card is i'm going to take a border punch and i'm going to punch across the top of this card to just give it some Give it an interesting pattern across the top of the card. This will be so cute. And that shape kind of sort of looks like tulips. Not really, but sort of. So I just thought that'd be a cute pattern to use. I love border punches. So that'll just make the top of my little card look lacy love that 
and then I'm just gonna figure out where my little flowers are gonna go to make my little field and I think what I'm gonna do down at the bottom is to just do some grass to paint some grass with um, acrylic paint so I'm gonna just put two different colors of green on my little paper template I like to use two different colors because then it gives it some depth it's not so flat and I'm just gonna use a little sponge brush and pick up some paint and just dab in some little a little grassy area Just like that it's just kind of cute and it'll look cute with the tulips and now I'm going to take an Arteza paint pan this is the fine point acrylic marker and I'm going to just um, come in here and put in some little bits of grass before I glue everything down because it'll be hard to put it in there and have it be in the background if I glue the images down first so Oh, that jing 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 is my dog's little bell. So just like that, just add a little bit of grass. This kind of looks cute. Like that. Okay, so now I'm going to lay my images across. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to take some blueprint sketch. Um, this is just uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink and a sponge and I'm going to just go across the top tips where I punched it and that'll just give it a little bit more color. Go a little darker down the sides maybe to frame it. Oh yeah, I like that. That looks really cool. See how that just kind of made it look fun and interesting and now I'm just gonna lay out my pieces and then glue them into place with some art glitter glue and then the final thing will be probably to add a saying to the little card so this is how I glued them on and what I did was I took some um, pop-ups pop tape and I put some pop-up tape on just a couple of them to make them stand up and then I didn't glue all of the leaves down so that way they really look kind of three-dimensional and then I'm going to just cut across the bottom here to cut off the stems that are too long like that so look at how cute I don't even want to add a saying to this because it is just too cute by itself so I hope that gave you an idea and showed you some fun things to do with layering the flowers, watercolor painting them, and making that cute background on a Rolodex card for this cute art by Marlene um, Go Dutch rubber stamp set. So thank you Mimi for the happy mail for the stamps and I hope you had fun and that this inspires you to maybe go uh, try a Rolodex card and um, create something fun today because art soothes the heart. Thanks for stopping by.